So let's take you through class point this afternoon. All right, so, so what is class point? Well, firstly, class point is a Microsoft add-on for PowerPoint. Secondly, you do need a Microsoft 365 account. Um, but once you've got those two things, ClassPoint is an absolute one-stop shop for engaging and interactive lessons. It provides you with presentation tools, annotation tools, and a little bit of gamification. So step one is to, in the meantime, get a second device ready if that's possible so that you can participate in five of the interactive activities lined up for this afternoon. It will also just give you the, the learner experience so that you can kind of get a feel for what your learners will, will go through when you use class point in the classroom. So you will see in the top left-hand corner, uh, it says class code 11236. And as I am showcasing only the free version of class point this afternoon, I can only take 25 maximum participants to participate in the interactive activity. So get those devices out and ready. Um, you will go to classpoint.app or I can quickly just show you. There is the QR code if you're able to scan that, or if you are just going via the internet, via the web, it will be classpoint.app. And the code for this afternoon is 11236. So I'm just gonna close that, that window. And while you're getting ready, let me talk a little bit about how do you access, how do you get ClassPoint? So the first point where you will have to be is www.classpoint.io. So that is the web address that you will have to type in. Once you have typed that in, you will then see this landing page that you see on the screen at the moment. And from that point on, you will go to resources. And that is where you're going to find the rest of the installation process. So after you've clicked on resources, you will then get to this page. And on the left-hand side, you will see it says download center. I just have to mention at this point that it is, class point is for Windows devices only. For installation, it is only on devices that's running Windows. However, your learners can access ClassPoint on any device. So for example, at my school, uh, my desktop runs Windows, so I'm able to install ClassPoint, but my learners are on Apple devices and they are able to access and work with the interactive tools. All right, so it is unfortunately not uh, able to download on Mac devices. All right, so after Download Center, this is the page that you will see, and it will show you Download for Windows right at the bottom of the screen, and you will click on Download for Windows. After that, it will say Download Successful, and you will then move on to this installation guide. You click on that, and it's, it's like most other files and apps that we download onto our devices, it will give you a little EXE file to download. And then, then the last step, once you've downloaded and you've got the installation going, it is going to prompt you to sign in. And as I mentioned before, this is only for Microsoft 365 users. So this is where you will use your Microsoft login credentials. All right, so that's basically the download, installation, and sign-in process. Once you've done all of that and you open a PowerPoint presentation, this is how you know that you have installed it successfully. On the right-hand side, it will say, it will show Ink No Class Point. So that shows you that you have installed it successfully. And then on the left-hand side, this is, 
is the sister ribbon you will see you will this is where the sign in is and you can see that i am signed in to class points once i am in powerpoint so those are the two places that will show you successful installation and that you have signed in right so this is just a, a very useful page for me uh, when you click on your name where you saw my name on the left hand side you will get this page called settings and there, there are a couple of things here that i feel are quite important to to note and where to find things so first of all under settings this is the settings page it will show you who you are it shows you your school and that you are indeed on the basic or free account. So everything that I'm going to show today is absolutely free on ClassPoint. Nothing much on the left-hand side, except at the bottom, this is where you could sign out of ClassPoint. I never sign out. I just stay signed in. It's just much easier. And then also you will see some important information on the right-hand side to show your class code during presentation, which you can see I'm showing at the moment. You could toggle that off, but I, I really do that. I just keep it on for my class, although they know the code of part by now. Um, show toolbar. So when I get into the other slides, I'll show you the toolbar. Um, this is one place where you could toggle it off. Or I can show you later on another place where you could hide the toolbar if you wanted to. Sometimes I do that, but other than that, I, as you can see, I just keep it toggled on. And then very important, this one at the bottom, enable audience slide viewer. If enabled, your slides will be displayed on participant devices. That is, of course, what you want. So that must always be toggled on. In case the children say, ma'am, sir, I can't see your slides, this is where you will come to look if this is indeed toggled on. All right, so that's just the settings page. It's got a, a couple of useful things to, to know in the future. All right, so we, we have actually already spoken a little bit about accessing once you've installed ClassPoint. The first, the first access point is you could show a QR code, as I did a couple of minutes ago. Alternatively, the children, or if it's teachers, they just type in classpoint.app, which some of you may have done, and then the code, which is always displayed, as you can see, in the top right-hand corner. The other thing you could do is if you are perhaps working with Teams or Google Classroom, you could also uh, just copy a, a link and, and put it in there. And once, once that step is taken care of, this is the next thing that, that learners will see on their devices. They will type in the code, which is always available on the right top right hand side of the screen. Uh, they will then click the arrow. It will prompt them for their name so that you can afterwards just have a look at how students responded. And you click on the arrow and off they go. They will then be able to participate. All right, I see at the moment we only have six participants that are going to participate in the interactive. Hopefully when maybe a few more teachers at, are in the webinar, they can maybe just also... Uh, sign into that. All right, so that's access. And while I'm on the access, a very neat, cool trick that I actually learned quite by accident was if I tap S on my keyboard, it gives me a spotlight function, uh, which I thought was really cool. So that's quite nice to know. And I just click on S again to take away the spotlight. So that's quite a nifty, a nifty little thing to know. All right, so that's all about access. I'm not sure if there are any questions at this point. Not as yet, Erin. Oh, uh, thank you. you very much. Thanks. All right, let's move on. So before we, we get into the interactive activities, I think it's always just good for us, especially as teachers, just to have a look again at a couple of things around presentation hopefully you're all going to be very excited and you're going to get back to your schools in the coming days and you might want to present this 
maybe just in a great meeting, which is always a good place to start. And I think these are a couple of things that, that are very important for us. This was good for me as well, because I sometimes fall into the same traps. And it was just, just good to go through presentation theory. So when we present anything, doesn't matter if it's just to our learners in the class or to a colleague, a couple of things to remind ourselves is to avoid filler words like um. So I'm trying to concentrate on that, not to um too much this afternoon. Another very useful thing to remember is, is to talk to your audience and not to your whiteboard or whichever board you have in front of your classroom. Just a reminder not to turn our backs to our audience, but to actually engage, look at look at the colleagues, look at the children when you are speaking to them, because we sometimes get very glued to the screen and what's happening in, in the front of the classroom. And then also just to come across very confident, we need to rehearse a little bit. Children can pick up very quickly when, when we are umming and eyeing, and we're not quite sure <laughs> what we want to want to present to them. So colleagues, teachers out there, I think just a reminder to always rehearse what we want to say, especially in a very important presentation. Um, the next one I want to just chat about briefly is good practice. So I don't know about you, but I've been teaching quite a number of years and I have many PowerPoints on my OneDrive. And I use PowerPoint, I could easily and honestly say daily. And so some of the things that are really good to put in and just to get that reaction and that participation from your audience is using memes. Those are incredibly, incredibly popular and they're very powerful. I think immediately you have engaged your, your learners. To have a laugh, sometimes we get nervous when we have to especially present to colleagues, um, but maybe just relax a little bit, make a joke. Even the children really appreciate that because they see the more human side to, to us. And then as you're presenting examples, I think what has really worked for me in the classroom is to, to be aware of what's relevant to my students what they are interested in and what is trending and to bring that into examples when I'm doing my PowerPoints with class points, of course. Um, and then lastly, just for audience participation, to get your audience to be 100% involved and engaged, be well prepared. It's always a good idea, and I do this myself, um, just before I present webinars, I quickly contact a colleague and ask if I can just maybe run through my presentation with them, get some feedback, which brings me to the next point, anticipate some frequently asked questions, and I actually invite them to, to question me and to test me so that I can be well prepared for when I'm actually presenting webinars. So being well prepared is so important anticipate questions that may come your way, and then also for troubleshooting. Like when it comes to the installation of ClassPoint, accessing accessing it, just test this with maybe more than one colleague and, and just make sure that everything's running smoothly. So on the day, you can go in there and feel really confident. All right, so that is just a little bit on, just a few reminders on presentation theory. That's, let's get the boring, <laughs> the boring things out of the way. And here we are, right? I see we have nine of you that have logged in with um, the class code 11236. And so we're going to kick off with the first interactive activity, which is one of five. So I just want to remind everybody that I'm using the free version this afternoon. And so on the free version, I can only include a maximum of five interactive activities. On the paid version, it's about, I think it's, yeah, it's about 25. Uh, so that just gives you a bit more scope, but, but I've, I only use the free version at school and I find it very doable, very enjoyable and more than enough actually. So, right, so we're going to kick off with a slide drawing. So I'm already using my laser tool. And that is going to be our first interactive 
activity. And as you will have seen by now, I've used a theme for today's webinar. Being a grade five teacher, ancient Egypt is one of the topics that we teach in term three. And so you'll see this ancient Egypt theme running through the interactive activities this afternoon. So before I activate the slide, this is the hieroglyphic alphabet. I just want to show you what it would look like on your side if you've got a second device or for your learners in class. So basically on the left hand side, what they will see on their devices is just again who you are. And then it will say, click on open slide, which is at the bottom here. All right, then it's gonna say, choose a color. So you would get an option of a couple of colors that you could use to, to draw your name. And then this is where you would draw. So my learners drew on the at the bottom of the slide and some of them even drew just up the side so just in case you're not sure that is where you would go and then of course once you have drawn you will click on submit all right so it's open slide choosing a color and then if you could draw something up here for me right let's get started let's go back and I will come back right at the end of the webinar. Unfortunately, I can't show you how to include these because I'm on my maximum of five, but at the end, I will delete one of these and just go back and show you how easy it is to add these interactive slides. So here we go. Slide drawing is our first one. Right, there we go. So um, for those of you that are not Joining the interactive activity, you can see at the bottom, there's a timer that's running, as well as how many submissions there are and whether responses are going to be, if we're going to see the names of the learners or not. So you can toggle that on and off. I prefer to leave that off. It just allows the children to feel more free. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. There's one coming through already. We'll give it a couple more seconds just to get a few more of you trying this out. And, and, and now, there we go. Anton, thank you very much. <laughs> Yay, thank you. These are looking great. All right, so it shows at the bottom how many of you out of the 11 now. Another person has joined. Welcome for four submissions. Thank you, Charlene. We'll give it a couple of couple uh, of seconds and then we'll have a look all right 12 of you welcome there's another person joining wonderful to have you in the interactive activities welcome all right let's give it another 30 seconds i know you're still trying to figure out <laughs> which letters belong to your name and so this, this is something that I normally give the children a little bit more time as well because they first have to figure out, find all the letters, and then they start to draw. So give it 10 more seconds. All right, 13, welcome. That's wonderful. We've got 13 of you joining the interactive activities. Wonderful. Oh, I see, I see another Erin in, in the house. Welcome. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so, so part of the gamification is um, I can now award stars and that should be popping up on your screens. Um, and this is great excitement because right at the end, there's actually a leaderboard and the children, I normally tell them there's a leaderboard. And so they're working for these stars. So let's give you all stars. Thank you very much. And we're going to close. All right. So as you can see, your names are there now. They are at the bottom of your submissions. But I can also just toggle that off and close. All right. And then just because we can, I'm just going to award stars again to all of you just for your effort and your participation. So there you go. And we'll see how this all accumulates right at the end. There is an option to, of course, restart the activity should you wish to. You can download and then right at the top, I can also toggle start responses, 
which looks like it's all of you. <laughs> all of you are start responses. All right, so that is that is the first activity, the slide drawing. Let's move on. All right, so here we have the next one. So the second of the five is a word cloud. I think we are all quite familiar with the word cloud. And this is for those, for the 12 of you that are in the, in the interactive session, this is the question. Think of a great presenter or presentation that you attended or listened to. Describe their presentation skill with one word. So while you're thinking about that, I again just want to show you from the student view what they will see on the screen. So right here is the important part. It will say, respond to the question with a word or phrase. You can submit up to five responses. This is the place where you will type and then submit. All right, so if we are ready, Think of a great presenter or presentation. Describe their presentation skill with one word. So I click on Word Cloud to activate, and here we go. Right, let's see what our audience has in store for us today. Oh, wonderful. Yes, these are such important skills of any presenter. Wonderful. Yes. Very good. Let's get a few more so we can really build this out. And as you can see, so as this is building, the children will be able to see all the responses and the no names attached, absolutely anonymous, so they can absolutely go for it. Oh, these are wonderful. <laughs> these are absolutely great. All right, so I see Erin there. I'm, I'm not sure if, it's, if that's me <laughs> or the other Erin in the session, but I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, exciting. Wow, that's wonderful. So you've been to some really great uh, sessions. Okay, our word cloud is building. Let's give it 10 more seconds. That's absolutely wonderful. Exciting and fun is coming through strongly. Oh, these are really great. Let's give it a few more seconds. Nine of you have already responded. Ah, oh, informative. That's wonderful. So important that you actually leave these sessions with more information than, than you had. Exciting, fun. Yes, enthusiasm makes all the difference, doesn't it? Right. Thank you so much for these. I'm going to close. And there we go. I'm going to award stars to all of you. Again, these are accumulating. And the children will right now going, yay, can't wait for the end. So there is an option to insert this as a slide. Uh, I'm not going to do so right now, but there is that option if you want to, maybe after the time, I sometimes share my PowerPoints with my learners on Microsoft Teams. So if I wanted, if we were maybe, maybe answering a question on this slide and I'd like to insert it for them to look back on, you can absolutely insert it and it becomes part of your PowerPoint. Right, let's highlight some top answers. Okay. Right, not giving serves. Right. So I'm just going to award stars all of you because I can and I just feel generous. So there we go. It's giving you some more stars. All right, so that is the word cloud activity. All right, moving along. Oh, there's 13 of you. Welcome uh, to the next one, which is short answer. Keeping with our Egyptian theme, this is what I'd like you to think about for a minute. If you were an Egyptian god, what superpower would you have and how would you help mankind? So give that some thought. And while you're doing so, let me again just show you the student view. So the students will see just a smaller kind of snapshot of the bigger slide. And this is the instruction. Type your short answer below. You can add up to three answers. That is where the answer will be typed. And there's also bold, italics, underline, and some colors. So that is what the, the learners or colleagues will see. All right, if you were an Egyptian god, what superpower would you have and how would you help mankind? I'm really interested to see what you have for us this afternoon. So let's activate this one and off we go. All right. What superpower would you have and how would you help mankind? 
We'd love to hear from all 13 of you that are participating on a second device. So thank you so much for joining again. If there's anyone who would still like to join, it's classpoint.app and the code is double one two three six. Oh, kindness, yes. So important that so everybody would be kind. Ah, oh, <laughs> disappearing ink, right. Okay, and as you can see, the names, your names are not visible and you won't believe how incredibly powerful this is, that the learners feel comfortable to engage in these activities because they are completely anonymous, so powerful in the classroom. Uh, yes, the telepathy, kindness again. Uh, oh, no taxes, yes, <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Unlimited laughter. These are these are amazing. These are really good. All right, let's give it a few more seconds. <laughs> a money maker machine. Oh my goodness, wishful thinking. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh, the power of growth. That is incredible. These are so good. These are really great. Let's give it a few more seconds. I see only seven of you. Let's. Hope for a few more. Um, that everyone believe, oh, yes. These are incredible. These are really good, my goodness. We've really got some amazing teachers in the session this afternoon. Oh, yes, empathy, absolutely. Absolutely, these are wonderful. All right, I'm going to close in about five seconds. But thank you very much. These are really good answers. Okay. All right, let's close. And these are also incredible. How can I not award stars? So I'm going to give you all stars. There you go. And uh, at this point, I keep reminding the children that there is a leaderboard and we're going to see who's who's um, really submitted great answers. And also, I just want to point out to, to those of you in the webinar this afternoon that, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have not yet left um, PowerPoint. I haven't left presentation mode. So often we have to exit and go to other apps and have other apps and tabs open. I'm still in presentation mode and everything that I'm showing you is still absolutely free in ClassPoint. Okay, let's move on. So that is the short answer. Next up, we have, oh, this one is great fun, a multiple choice. So, um, Liesl Moritz from Kenreach, who actually worked on, on this content with me, we had great fun with this. So, we went into uh, Microsoft Copilot and we asked Microsoft Copilot just to help us out with, with something fun. So, keeping in the theme of ancient Egypt, what kind of King Tutankhamun would you be? And we asked Microsoft Copilot to give us a modern twist. So, you can see it says, at the top here, let's give Tutankhamun a modern twist. So which one of these would you like to be? Would you like to be all about stability and prosperity? Imagine this is your pitch. We're disrupting the pyramid industry with our innovative triangular structures. Investors, let's pyramid scheme our way to success. Or would you be all about religious traditions? And your daily routine would be to wake up, to check Twitter, and be blessed. Or dynamic succession. You have a LinkedIn bio, Pharaoh in training, seeking stable rulership opportunities, expert in pyramid schemes. Or lastly, cultural heritage. This would be your Instagram caption. You can see how much the children will love this. Just restore the Sphinx filter, swipe right, for the glove. All right, so those are the four. And just want to show you again what that would look like. Student view, they will get a little snapshot again of the slide. And it will say one or more answers, A, B, C, or D, and submit. All right. Okay, so hopefully you've given that some thought. And here we go. Let's see, multiple choice. Let's activate that. And off you go. Let's see what kind of modern kings 
we will have all right there's one coming through for d all right oh there's 15 of you in the session in the interactive session now that's wonderful all right d coming through strongly <laughs> okay give you a few more seconds to have a look at this one all right still d all right, A and C catching up. So this again, just, this just generates so much fun in the class. Children are absolutely so excited to see this happening in real time. I think that's where the excitement comes. All right, I see most of, most of you so far are going for the, the cult, cultural heritage. All right, A and C, you're still there with three each. <laughs> All right, we don't have Twitter, Twitter fans. A coming through, it's still D. Let's give it a few more seconds and let's see if this changes at all. All right, seven of you. Let's give it another 10 seconds. All right, it looks like it's going to be D. Right, okay, so seven of you, seven of you went for D, for cultural heritage, and then we have uh, the first one, A, and the C, and then not so much the religious one. All right, and award stars, let's go. There you go. All right, so that is the, the multiple choice, and then again, as you can see in the top right-hand corner, if you wish, if you've got like some important statistics here, depending on what topic you present this with, you may want to insert this into your PowerPoint and ClassPoint automatically allows that function. Right, let's move on to the next one. So what we have on the screen now is the next interactive activity, and it is called the draggable object. This activity, however, is led and driven by the teacher, meaning that previously, the three we've had before, the children were interacting on devices. In this particular one, draggable object, this is where the teacher will drag the object on the screen. So the children still participate through question and answer, but the teacher well, actually, it could work both ways. The teacher could drag the object, or I sometimes ask the learners to come to the screen. If you are in the fortunate position to have an interactive whiteboard in the front of your class, by all means, get the children to come and drag the objects. They would absolutely love that. So to activate this, right at the bottom of my toolbar, I click on draggable object. And you'll see the three lights up, the three that can drag, because three is unfortunately the maximum that you can drag in the free version. So the question or the statement says, the deceased was buried with many items believed to be used in the afterlife. Look at the items on the left, drag and drop three items you think were placed in the tomb. So now the moment I click on it, the children say to me, but ma'am, we can see the answers. And now they think they've caught me, and now I don't know what to say. But this is how I would deal with it. I said, yes, I know that you can see which ones I'm dragging. But let's talk about the first one. Why do you think that particular item would have been placed in the king's tomb? And then we have a whole debate and discussion around that. Then we would move the sandals into the tomb. And again, I would say to the children, all right, next item are the sandals. Why do you think, what would be the importance of choosing to put sandals into the king's tomb? And then the last item that we can drag is the chariot. And actually, the chariot was not placed just like that in the tomb. They actually had to dismantle and then put it into the tomb. And so with that background information, you see there comes well prepared, know my content. I will then engage the children in conversation. And then I will say to them, right, so we have one item left on the left-hand side. 
And why do you think this item would not be placed in the tomb? All right, so this would not be on these screens. This is where the teacher would, would take the lead. So that's the draggable object one. And then we have the last of the five, and it's the image upload. So what you're going to do for me here, the 16 of you that are now um, joining the interactive activities, is you're going to upload a map of Egypt. So on the on the children's devices, I'm sorry, let me just go back. On the children's devices, they will get these three options. They can select a photo on, on the device that's already been downloaded under your supervision, I would think, because I would I would supervise this. They can take a photo if that is possible. Again, I think this is where teachers need to circulate and make your presence felt. Or they can upload an image straight from the internet. This is where I definitely make sure that I'm moving in between and looking at what the children are doing. Because I had a question in my previous session about, is there any way to class point at all block inappropriate images that, you know, you always get that one learner that wants to test the boundaries? Not to my knowledge. So the workaround would either be to, to make sure that you are circulating and, and watching what the, what the children are doing, or just be part of them taking a photo or selecting a photo already on their devices. So those are the three options. All right, so I'm going to you, however, I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust my teachers out there this afternoon. And we are now going to activate the image upload. All right, so this can also be very powerful because you can use this to annotate, and I'll show you that a little bit later. So here we go. You are uploading an image of Egypt, and I do believe that you are required just to caption. So you will click on upload an image from the internet, search for a map of Egypt, and caption it. And let's see what um, the responses are like. So we're just waiting for some to come through. And while we're waiting, Charlene, is there, are there any questions? Or is everything good? No, and everything is going very smoothly. I think everybody understands exactly oh. what we're Awesome, thank you. All right, so there we go. We've got some maps coming through. And once again, teachers, the fact that the names are blocked out is incredibly powerful. Uh, this is where even my quiet learners, those that normally are too shy to participate, um, feel absolutely free and, and they love Classpoint because they know that they can, this is something they can also participate in. And look at that, there your maps are coming through. That is absolutely well. Let's travel. Yes, what a cool map. <laughs> I like that. And and those and those learners that are sitting in our classes with, with this kind of creativity will also often come up with a really great caption. And and you can definitely say, well, that is different. That's absolutely wonderful. All right, so look how easy that is. And I, I just want to remind you again, everything that I'm showing you is absolutely free and I still have not had to leave presentation mode. All right, let's give it another five seconds and then I'm going to show you something else that's really cool to do with an activity like this. There we go. Okay, right. So I'm going to give a star to you. What a cool map, just because it's different. And I'm going to get to less travel, start for you. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to close these submissions at this point. And what, what is really nice and whatever, however you're thinking already, and I hope you are thinking about topics that you can use this, PowerPoints that you already have. All you have to do is down store, um, download and install PowerPoint and you will have this at your fingertips, is to, you can highlight, you can click on a particular map or whatever submissions that you've asked the children to give, and we can actually discuss 
you can pull out separate maps and actually ask questions about that map, which I think is really a really nice option. All right, good. So that is the image upload interactive activity. So the, that, that brings us to the end of the five maximum interactive activities, but I think you will agree with me that that is really powerful. That's that's quite a lot that you can do under the free version. And later on, when I just show you the, the ribbon again, there are actually only three other icons that, that's under the paid version. So this, this to me is very doable and, and the children absolutely enjoy it. All right, so what you're seeing on your screen now is we're going to move further and look at some other options on the class point toolbar, which is found at the bottom of the presentation. So these are all of them. These are presentation tools, annotation tools, and there's some gamification. Right, so the first one is the laser, and you've actually seen me using that from the very beginning of the webinar. So it's right here at the bottom. It's already activated. And what I love about this invisible ink is that it disappears because if it didn't, this a slide could have so much information on it that you want to point out, it could get incredibly busy and distracting. So I absolutely love the fact that I can do this and it disappears. So that's the laser function. Next up on our toolbar, is the pen. I'm not going to spend too much time because we even have this kind of on other devices like our cell phones, etc. But it is this pen tool at the bottom. And what it does, it, it gives you quite a nice variety of colors, I think, for free version. And then, of course, different, different thicknesses. So I could choose the yellow and I can choose and I can, and then I can draw. I can then draw or annotate or whatever is on my screen. Hi. All right. Next up, we have the highlighter. Again, I think that speaks for itself, but you might have a slide with some text on it and you would activate your highlighter. You have an option of five colors and different thicknesses. So I've got the yellow and so I can also just highlight some, some information on the slide for the learners. Next up is the eraser, should be the eraser, yeah. All right, also self-explanatory, you activate it by just clicking on it and, if, and then you, you would just erase if there was anything on your screen. All right, okay, so let me just, I'm just gonna go back to the highlighter where I was highlighting um, and use the erase, use the eraser and there we go. And as you notice, that was one click. There was not, you know, some, some tools you've got to like do like 10, 15 brushes across the screen. That was one click. And what whatever was on the screen was gone. That's the eraser. Next up, shapes. All right, so for our maths and science teachers, I think this is really awesome. Again, we have your basic shapes. You have some connectors, some arrows and lines. Look at the variety of colors, and this is all free version, as well as I can have it filled or not filled. So if I maybe went for the pink, and this is going to look like a sticky note. I don't know about you, but I love sticky notes. Um, so yeah, and you can move it around your screen, and so you can absolutely create many different things um, in maths and science or any other subject. Our next, our next icon is the text box. Again, self-explanatory. It's the one next to the shapes. You click it. There's your text box. And I will say this is, okay, if I can type properly, this is going really well. There you go. So there you have the text box option. And... Uh, you can also move that around wherever you need to put it. All right. Next up, after the text box, we have, oh, my goodness, this is a game changer. There's, there's a few coming up now. So buckle up. Whiteboard is one of them. This is absolutely amazing. And everything that I'm going to show you is still on the free version of ClassPoint. 
So it is the one next to the text box. It says whiteboard. And Classmate already comes with these already built into it. So we have just a whiteboard on which we can type or annotate. And this doesn't have to be, this is not something you have to have thought of before you present your PowerPoint. Sometimes, and, and you know this happens in class, things happen spur of the moment and you're thinking, I wish I had a slide to document something that the learners are saying or information. Well, you can do that now with, with ClassPoint. This can actually be inserted as you are presenting your PowerPoint. So there's a, a whiteboard, there's yellow, green, and black. So apparently the research says that children with dyslexia, uh, it's better for them to have these other color screens than black typing or writing on a white screen. So ClassPoint has thought of everything. It's even tried to be inclusive by giving different options for the needs of the learners in your class. There's rule paper, teachers in the foundation phase or uh, grade four still maybe doing writing. Maybe this is part of your PowerPoint. You can actually include a rule paper into your immediately onto your screen and you'll be able to then use the pen tools, the highlighter, etc. For our maths and science teachers, this graph paper, this X, Y axis paper, why, as that serves as a digital background or whiteboard that you can immediately type on, draw on, or annotate on. And once you've selected, I'm not going to do it now, but once you select one that you like, you insert the whiteboard straight away. What's also really cool is at the top here, it says custom whiteboards. I don't have any uploaded at the moment, but if you were teaching geography and you wanted to put in a map of Africa or the world to later highlight on or to annotate on, you absolutely can preload it and insert it as a slide in your PowerPoint. Okay, so that is the whiteboard, very powerful. And notice I have not left presentation mode as yet. That is the whiteboard function in class point. Right, then we move on to. OK, so draggable object. Um, we've done this activity, but I just want to remind you to activate your draggable objects. You do have to just click at the bottom to make them draggable. Maximum of three in the free version. Next up on our toolbar. Teachers, this is incredible. It is the AI quiz function in ClassPoint. So what I've got here is text, some text for my grade five learners. Again, I have to admit, I did go to Microsoft Copilot and ask just for six interesting facts about Egypt. I then took it over to my slide, put it into my slide, and look what I can do with this. So I activate AI quiz on my toolbar at the bottom. And now it's saying, hi, I'm ClassPoint AI. I can read your current slide and create some quiz questions with answers provided. I have two options. I can just leave it to the AI to generate a question, and then I just click on generate question, or if I want to, as a teacher, be in the driving seat, I click on options. And here we have three, multiple choice, filling the blanks or short answer. But look at this, look at what's below those question types. It has built in Bloom's taxonomy levels. So all five levels that many of us include when we set papers, when we're testing the children in class, I can actually select and say, I want multiple choice and I want it on an, a level of understanding. That's the one I want. So I'm going to choose that one and generate question. 
Now it says, hey, hey, I'm reading your slide. And this is the question I have. And just like that, this does not come on the children's screen. This is projected on the screen that's in front of the class. What was the primary purpose of most ancient Egyptian pyramids? And it gives me four options. So at this point, I can ask the children, right, so give me the answer. And they will debate and they will disagree. And then finally I'll say, right, we're going to have to come to a conclusion. So give me A, B, C, or D. They call out and then I can check the answer. I can also save this as a slide, the question, or I can generate another question. Right, so um, in a previous session, a teacher asked me, so how does the AI determine the level of the question? So the answer to that is, well, the text that's on the slide is text that I have specifically chosen at the level for my grade fives. So the question that the AI is creating is reading the level from the information that I have on the slide. And so therefore the question generated should be at a suitable level because the text is at the level that I'm teaching at. All right, so, all right, so A, B or C, uh, let's go with, let's say D. And let's check the answer. All right. So the answer was actually C was also. Hopefully all of you out there are saying C, C, C. It was absolutely C. Right. So I can save this as a slide. I can generate, generate another question. Right. So I do not want to generate another question because on the free version, I'm only, I get a total of 20 credits in this AI quiz function. Obviously, class point is limiting it because they want, they want us to go and purchase the, the premium version. So I don't use this very often because once I've used my 20 credits, I can't use the AI quiz function on the free, on the free version. So use it sparingly. I do use it now and again, but just a reminder, you only have 20 credits to use. All right, so I'm going to close that one and I'm not going to use another because I think I've used about 10 of my 20 already. On the toolbar is the timer. So if we activate the timer, this is really, this is really handy. And again, what I love about this, this particular tool is that normally I would have to exit PowerPoint. I would have to have another app with a timer and a stopwatch open somewhere so that I can quickly put a timer on the screen. Not anymore with class point. I can activate the timer right on my screen and a stopwatch if I need. I can adjust this. I can tell the children, right, you have four minutes to discuss whatever question I may have put to them. And I can even, I can even go full screen if I choose. All right, so this is so nifty, so handy. I have a timer at my fingertips and I just click start and then they can see it all the time as they are working towards that four minute or whatever time you set. So this is really very, very handy and useful. That is the timer and stopwatch function. Right, Ooh, we're nearing that leaderboard. I hope, I hope, Everybody's still in this webinar and still enjoying it very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the browser is incredible. Previously, if I wanted to, if the children asked me a question, and let's face it, we don't know all the answers. <laughs> and some of us have really intelligent, smart children in the class that ask a question, and we're not quite sure. Well, instead of having to exit and then go to Google, I can stay in presentation mode and we can access the web browser, which is this one, this icon on the toolbar. So I activated and this is in real time. And it brings Google up immediately for me. And what's really important to notice is that some teachers think, well, I've been Googling 
answers to exam papers or whatever. Um, oh my goodness. And now Google pops up and maybe it's Google from my device or from my desktop or my laptop. No, not at all. This is not. This is independently. It's not tracing your history or anything else that you may have been, been Googling. So uh, maybe one of the children asked me, so how old was King Tutankhamun when he became king? I said, right, great question. Bring up Google and let's find out how old was King Tut when he became king. All right, so this is happening in real time, and there you go. And I haven't left class point. And there is my answer, nine years old. I can at this point just show the children there are some other information. We can even open some of these in real time. Isn't this absolutely incredible? So any question, anything that you want to research or you need an answer to immediately, you simply click on the web browser in Classpoint and you have access to Google right off the bat. And then I can insert this as a slide. Maybe that information I want in my presentation because I'm going to share it with my learners afterwards. No problem. Insert it as a slide and the children will have it in the PowerPoint in Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom, whichever platform you use. So that is the magic of the web browser. All right, next up, we have the polls, right? So this is also really fun, and we're going to run a poll um, with, the, with the teachers that are still in the webinar. And it's this one at, on your toolbar. It says quick poll. And so there are a couple of really, really nice options. And still, everything is free. Is there a limit to the polls that you run? No. To my knowledge, there's no limit to the polls, only to the AI quiz questions, a total of 20. But here, let's go with feedback. Let's choose feedback level. And we're going to ask our teachers that are still in the webinar to uh, let us know what is the likelihood of you going back to school tomorrow and installing PowerPoint. So let's run this poll from class point. And there we go. So the question is, how likely are you? Oh, yay. To go back to school tomorrow and get the IT person or you yourself to install class point at your school. There we go. So there you can see and, and you can put out a question to the learners in class and get immediate feedback. Teachers, this is incredibly exciting when this is all happening in real time and the children are engaged. It is magic. It is absolutely fantastic. Strongly agree. Agree. This is looking good. I'm glad that you are convinced that class point is the way to go. Right, let's give it a few more seconds for more of you to participate. If you've maybe just joined us, it's classpoint.app and the code is 11236. It's not too late. It's not too late to join in the fun. All right, so there are nine, ten. Right at the bottom, I can see that I've had 10 responses already. Amazing. And so you're running a live poll. Normally, before I had class point in my life, I had to exit my PowerPoint. I would have had to have Mentimeter or something like that ready to open and then run the poll. No more. I have this function right inside PowerPoint and I'm ready to go and can run it in lifetime. Okay, right, wonderful. Can't wait. Strongly agree and agree. There you go. And that is the poll function. And once again, with everything that I've shown you in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes, you can insert as a slide if you would like it to be part of a PowerPoint that you will share with your learners in the future. All right, and you can run another poll. Uh, as, I, as I said earlier, to my knowledge, there's no limit in the free version on the number of polls that you run. Okie dokie. 
Right, now we are getting to almost the leaderboard, the name picker. This is incredible. I'm going to click on it just so that you can have a look at what this looks like. So this is what it looks like. And the names that are in the wheel at the moment are the 18 participants that have logged into the session. So the 18 of you that went classpoint.app 11236 or scan the QR code, it's your name. So the 18 of you that are in the live interactive session, it's your names that are on the wheel. Normally, again, I love doing this. It, it creates so much excitement in the class for various things. I would normally have to have something like Wheel of Names um, as a tab, and I would have to exit PowerPoint, click on Wheel of Names, and then run it. I don't have to do that anymore. I haven't left presentation mode. Everything happens live in class point. There is another option if you don't like the wheel. There's an option of card wheel, from card to wheel, wheel to card. So this is what it looks like. Maybe for younger learners, I'm not sure. I I kind of teach upper grade five, six, seven. But if you click on each of these images, it will reveal a name. But for today, and there's even an auto pick if you just want to also go with that, you can. So let's let's we, we're going to run this, um, and hopefully the person. Uh, is still in the webinar. I can maybe just in the chat. So, Shalina, I wonder if I can put you on the spot. Can you think of something we can ask the person whose name lands on the wheel? Uh, what I really want to know is whose <laughs> name is Evra. That's very interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's, all right. So, well, let's see what happens. I'm going to spin and let's see what name we get. Here we go. And it's Lorian. So Lorian, if you are still in the webinar, could you maybe answer that question? Charlene, do you want to just give that question again? <laughs> I would like to know <laughs> participant chose the very interesting and and exciting <laughs> name of Eva. <Ezra>. Um. <laughs> All right, so let's see if Lorian can answer that question in the chat. Um, so Charlene, you'll have to, I can't see the chat, you'll have to just let me know what's happening. But let's let's see if Lorian is gonna answer the question. And then we can then I can give you a star <laughs> for the lead. Let's see, let's see. Nothing coming through, Erin. Maybe the okay. fryer themselves must must reveal. <laughs> Who it is. Yes, okay. All right. So Air Fryer, if you are still in the webinar, we'd love to know. Please, can you put it in the chat so that Charlene can share with me and with all of us? So while that's happening, I can put the name back if I wanted to, but normally I, I wouldn't do that. Um, we would just spin the wheel again. Let's just spin it. This is then the name picker. And like I said, how magical this is because I don't have to be presentation mode. And everything is still for free. Okay, right. So now we are getting to the leaderboard. That's going to be this icon here. So before I click on the leaderboard, it is going to show us the person that's right at the top of the leaderboard in today's session. Hope the person is still in the webinar. At this stage, I've got my class doing the drum roll because they've had this at the back of their minds. They know this is coming. And so they're really trying to give good answers, critical thinking answers. They're really trying their best because they know there's a leaderboard. So hopefully you're doing a drum roll somewhere. And let's click on the leaderboard and see who our winner is this afternoon. For the children, they absolutely love this part. And then at this point, I just let them celebrate. And a couple of things, obviously, to point out here. Firstly, again, you can insert it as a slide if you wanted to. But what you need to note here is you'll see there are two options at the top. Because we're in the free version, it gives the total number of stars only for today's session. If I had to uh, run with this again, if I presented this again, it will start from scratch. Next to it, you'll see total stars. So this is where the gamification 
in the paid version is a step up. Because what happens with the total stars rank is that with every PowerPoint that you use class point, the number of stars accumulates and the children can actually earn, they level up and they also earn badges. So it does take the ga gamification to another level, but unfortunately that's not available in the, in the free version. And the paid version is quite pricey. It's 1,700 rand. Um, for annual annual fee, but this this is this will suffice. Um, I obviously only use the free version. I use this every time that I um, present with uh, PowerPoint, my class point, and this generates enough excitement for the children to to really look forward to the next time um, that you present class point with PowerPoint. So there we go. Congratulations to the top three. OK, I'm going to close the slide and that that brings me to the end of the toolbar. I'm going to exit now for the first time because I, in the last 20 minutes or 15 minutes, I just want to show you a couple of other things on the ribbon. But this is the end of the toolbar. And this is where, remember earlier on, the beginning of the webinar, I said there was another little icon you could click on to hide the toolbar. It's this here where, where, where my cursor is at the moment. All right, I'm going to exit at the first time. First time in an hour and, and a half almost. I'm going to exit. And now I just want to show you a couple of really useful, um, useful things. All right, so let's just go back to the top. OK, all right, so in, I'm going to and then of course I've got to just I must not forget to show you how to include one of those interactive activities. Right, I've clicked on ink no class point. And what you will see is multiple choice here at the top word cloud, short answer, slide drawing. Those are the interactive activities that are used. Next to it, you will see fill in the blank audio and video upload. And those are really the only three that's available in the paid version. Everything else I've shown you this afternoon is available for free. I'm going to just kind of move from left to right and show you some things that were not in the slides. So quiz ideas gives you some starter templates. Not all of them are free, but for example, it says quiz ideas are multiple choice. And these first few are all free. And as I scroll down, these are all these are also free until I get to here. This one it says pro in the corner. So that one here's another pro that's paid version. But scattered in between are some amazing templates for free. They are customizable. So you might look at this one uh, with the piano and think, oh, I like the layout, but it's got nothing to do with music. It doesn't have to be. You can insert it. You see there's a plus button. You can insert it into your slide deck and it's fully customizable. So you can change whatever you need to suit your topic and your subject. But this is all for free um, and these are for multiple choice. So you can scroll through and have a look. The same on the left hand side. Next one is word cloud again. Scroll through. It's great. These are already done for you. You just have to customize them according to what you're looking for. There are some that are pro version. The rest are all free. So why not? And the same for short answer. These are all free, teachers. This is incredible. Same for slide drawing. Have a look. I've used some of these myself. Saves me time. Um, I've used some of these and I've had to change one or two things, but these are incredible to use so that you will find under quiz ideas next up is my classes so i have already set up my class as you can see on the left hand side and my class code that's that's for all my presentations that i do because i'm a kind of a registered class teacher i have my class and because the on the free version is 25 maximum I have more than 30 children, I think most of us do, in our classes. So my workaround is to team them up. Sometimes I just have 
um, them in twos. And sometimes I have them in threes and they actually sit together and answer some of the interactive activities on the slides that I presented to you earlier. I do like to change it up because if you have the same children winning on the leaderboard, the others are going to lose interest. And that, that's the, a, a reality. So I like to, every two to three weeks, I change it around and I don't always partner the same children together to give everybody that sense of success. So that is my workaround. I either team them up or I put them in groups of three, maximum four. I wouldn't go. I think that's too many for them to, to chat together. But that really works because I then get different children on that leaderboard. And then if there are any teachers that have more than one class that you're teaching and you'd like to use class point, this is where you would add another class. All right, so that is where you would add your classes. I can click on, on, on this one, my class at the moment, and it will show you. So there are all my learners. At the moment, I've got them in threes mostly. And um, this is where I can change my class name. I can change the code, but, but we've been using it since February, so we're quite comfortable. And this is also where maybe at the end of the year, I'd like to delete this class and add another class. And in case you were wondering, what are the maximum number of classes in the free version? It's three. It's a maximum of three classes that you can have in the free version. And then last but not least, still very important, under more features, this is where the draggable objects lives. This is where you would uh, find it. Quiz summary only on the paid version whiteboard background. So you remember when I was talking about the backgrounds, you can, as you're presenting, include a, a whiteboard background, but maybe you are, are wanting to include graph, a slide with graph paper. You, This is where you would do it. You would click on whiteboard backgrounds, and this is where you would preload those particular white uh, backgrounds into your slide deck so that's already part of the presentation. And then you could also share your entire slide deck as a PDF. Classpoint does that for you for free. Then reset. This is very important, teachers, because I, I will use the slide deck again when I review for before final exams then I don't want all my annotations and my drawings and everything else that are on the slides. I wouldn't like that to be part of the slides and it will stay there until I reset. So if you're going to want to reuse any slide decks that you've used with Classpoint, this is where I delete responses. This is where I can delete my annotations and very important, where I possibly want to reset my draggable objects. So that's very important. This is where you will find it. So don't forget to reset <laughs> before you before you present again. Otherwise, everything else from the previous session will be on the slides. And then this is incredibly useful. It's the get help section and tutorial. So if you have forgotten what I, what I presented this afternoon, Classpoint has built in these very short video clips. Gamification, if that's what you're looking for, just to go back and refresh your memory. Presentation tools, interactive quizzes. I can click on these. And you can see in the corner the very um, short videos. I can expand. And on the left hand side, it will show me what is on offer and how long the videos are. And as you can see, they're not more than one or two minutes. So if you ever get stuck, you can always come back and watch the short video tutorial. All right, now last but not least, um, I need to just show you one example of how I actually include these interactive, one of the interactive ones. So I'm going to go back to one that I used, let's go to word cloud. All right, so I'm going to delete this. 
and then show you from scratch. It's incredibly easy, but it's important for you to see what's happening here on the right hand side because this is where you can this is where you can choose. So I'm going to click on multiple choice. And then you see it's immediately popped on my slide. I can move it around. I can resize this on my slide and put it wherever I want. And this is where you can customize each one of the five that I presented this afternoon. The moment you click and put it on your slide, you will get options on the right hand side. It will say to me, how many choices would you like? I can choose two choices, three. I, I obviously chose four. I can allow for multiple choices if there are perhaps two correct answers. I can show how many correct answers there are by clicking there, and I can indicate which ones are correct. Quiz mode, as you can see, that's pro version, so I'm going to skip that one. And then also, once I'm in presentation mode, do I want the, the multiple choice activities to immediately start with a slide? Do I want it to minimize the window after? And do I want the activity to automatically close? Today, I didn't use that option. I manually closed once I kind of felt I had enough uh, submissions from, from the teachers. But you can absolutely set this up to suit your learners. And it's as easy as that. Once I've made my selection, I just close and my multiple choice question is ready for presentation. Charlene Bradley, um, it is, I think there's still about six or seven minutes left, but that is it from me. I don't know if there's anything else I can answer.